what keeps you going. I am here to experience life as slash you slash existential underscore virus for about 100 years, if I'm lucky, before fading to eternal nothingness which I've experienced for billions of years before, and will experience for infinite amount of time after. Might as well take a look around, eat some good food, experience weird emotions, and meet some interesting people in the meantime. And once I'm gone, the only trace of me will be my online footprint, some music, art I uploaded, and memories of me in some people, which will probably fade away too. It will almost be like I was never here, and that's okay. I experienced something. It's okay to just zoom through life doing the things you love. This is a key aspect of mindfulness. Don't dwell on what you were created for. Don't dwell on the past, or try to predict the future. Stay in the present consistently engaging in what makes you feel alive. Life irony, consistently engaging in whatever makes you feel alive eventually leads to you to your purpose. Take this from someone who tried to find her purpose for two decades and once I gave up and decided to focus on the things I love, it came to me without me actively seeking it. Now, I wake up with excitement and motivation every single morning now which still amazes me every day after fighting depression since a preteen. It does. I struggle with life and my responsibilities but I'd be lying to you if I said that my life hasn't changed for the better after moving out. Honestly the best thing I have ever done in my 25 years of life. Been at it for almost a year but it's been one hell of a ride and I know it's just the beginning. Trust us Redditors when we tell you that it truly does get better after moving out. My husband, my as yet unborn son, my cat, my parents, the 9001 things I want to do learn new chain mail weaves, finally make a Winnie the Pooh amigurumi for my son, finish the gifts I'm making for my brother right now, eventually publish a book, finish making a video game, write a text based adventure, finally learn how to do pixel art, complete all of the Final Fantasy games, a lot, some of it's really simple. Some of it's heavy and vital, but all of it just sort of builds up to keep me going always. Sometimes it's nothing, but if you're going to ask me what keeps me fueled in life for example what makes me still caring about life then I guess it's hoping for more things to come. TBH, my life is kinda shitty right now when everyone's life is. However, the thought that this pandemic would someday end keeps us going and hoping what tomorrow will bring even if it's bad or not since there's always tomorrow. What keeps me going are the little things, small moments of happiness and acts of kindness with the people in my life that all add up and keep most of my dark thoughts at bay. When I feel like everything is crashing down around me I remember moments like my brother and I singing along to music terribly or being in my backyard with my dad, in the middle of the night looking up and talking about the stars. Listening to my favorite band. I'm sure lots of people feel this way about their favorite bands. My favorite is Ally and Edge. I find their voice is so calming. Even if it's not a song I personally relate to I can just put their music on and zone out and everything feels okay. When I saw them perform live I cried because my heart was so full. For the most part one enjoy my life. But I have my down days where I wonder what it's all for. Then I put on their music and it feels like a warm hug from a friend. Everyone deserves to have a band like that in their life. As nerdy as it may sound, my hero academia, the characters really inspire me to do better at things and work harder. Today I had a lot of work to do. Normally I'd be annoyed with so much work especially since I'm not super happy about my job. But today was different. I felt inspired by a particular character and I thought of them and it helped motivate me to get my work done. I felt good doing work for once. I actually had a positive outlook on work for once and it made the day all the better. I want that Homer Simpson poster thing he made, making it say, do it for her. Everything I do is for my wife. I want her to taste success and be happy. I personally don't care a whole lot about things this world has to offer. I'm happy owning cool shit but that tends to be expensive so I'm one of those people that just wants to be rich. But I lack the passion and drive to actually move in the right direction as I'm too afraid to lose what I have.
It happens to me several times a week. I want to quit. Just yesterday, I wanted to quit my run halfway into it. After the first mile, my lazy self asked, Why can't we just walk? For a while, the voice got louder with each step. But if it's not running, it is something else. My marriage, my job, my writing, my blog, or even God. This is just the nature of life. The temptation to quit is a recurring theme. And if the voices in our heads were not enough trouble, the voices in our culture also were just to throw in the towel, make a change, or take it easy on yourself. What these same voices fail to tell you is that there is a distinction between the dream and the work required to obtain it. Everything important requires work, hard work, and sometimes there is a long arc between the dream and its realization. That is where the work and the transformation occur. In my experience, the thing that keeps me going is answering this question, why am I doing this? I then try to remember the dream, why I am doing this hard thing that I am doing. I try to get connected to the original vision, because that keeps me going when the going gets tough. For example, when Gail and I have a fight, yes, we do have fights, I ask, so why should I stay in this marriage? Instead of pushing that question down like holding a beach ball under the water, I let it surface and embrace it. What is at stake? But notice, I'm not asking why should I quit? Because I will get answers to that question too. The mind is tricky that way. It will attempt to answer whatever question you ask it. So you must be very careful with how you frame the question. Instead, I focus on the positive. I am looking for reasons to keep going. So, why should I stay in this marriage? Because I want love to be the defining characteristic of my life. There is no better place to learn how to love than marriage. Because I want to be a leader, leading myself first and then my own family. Whatever else this means, it means initiative and sacrifice. That's what leaders do. Because I really do love this woman with all my heart. All I have to think about is all the incredible moments we have shared together through the years. Because she is the mother of my five children, and a really, really great mom. Because she is my best friend, even though we occasionally get on one another's last nerve. She is the one person I can count on to be there when I need someone to listen to me. Because we have 31 years invested in this relationship, it is less expensive to invest a little more than start over. We are too far into it to quit. I would say this if we had been married for six months. Because I really do know her. I have spent a lifetime learning. And yet there is still so much more I want to know. She fascinates me. Because I want to provide an example to my sons-in-law, and anyone else who is watching, of how to love a woman well. People need positive role models. And I want to be that person, because I want to leave a legacy of love and stability for my children and my grandchildren. The alternative is unthinkable, because I want my marriage to be an icon of Christ's love for his bride, the church. After all, this is the sacramental nature of marriage. See Ephesians 5 22-33. I have a written list like this for every important area in my life. If I get stuck and want to quit, I pull out the list and start reading through it. Immediately, it gives me perspective and energizes me. It makes it possible to silence the voices and get my head back into the race. The truth is that we learn the best lessons when we don't quit. This is when our character is transformed and good things happen. They hope that someday, I'll find a way to make a better life for myself. The truth is that as much as I say it, I don't want to die. I just don't want to be me. Sometimes and sometimes those times can be really hard, especially because I feel that the people that are supposed to be there for me in times of emotional need, aren't. When I have a breakdown, I just want a hug and an ear to listen, but nobody wants to. It's tiresome to bring myself back on my own two feet, but I'd rather do that than live in another 10-year depression slump. Curiosity for now, I'm still in school, but I want to know what it's like to work in my field, what it feels like to move out, and do my own thing. I would like to travel and see new things, but once I've had my fill, I see no reason to keep on going. I feel like I don't really fit in anywhere. I just feel alienated. I think I can do a pretty good job at coming across like a very likable person, 
but I don't actually know. I struggle to make any real meaningful connections with people. I just feel like I don't fit in anywhere, and I doubt anyone would really care anyway. Curiosity and the hope of a fulfilling life. It feels like there's more to life than what's immediately available to me. Whether it's people I haven't met or activities I haven't done, there's gotta be something that's really different from my everyday life that will suddenly make day-to-day -day life more meaningful. I used to think it was impossible for me but as each day passes, I feel like I owe it to myself to keep moving forward and see how things turn out. My sister surprised my mom with the puppy for Christmas cause she knew my mom would never get one after our last dog was put to sleep. Well, she chose me as the person she loves, and I don't want her to go through getting excited every time the door opens for it to be someone else, and she'll never see me again. I don't want to inconvenience anyone. My roommate wouldn't be able to afford the house if I couldn't pay rent, and she needs to, to watch her dogs regularly so that she can go visit her girlfriend, and I do most of the cleaning around the house. My work is a little understaffed, and I take on the most hours out of anyone else who works my shift. Plus they're training me to take on more tasks because several other people who did those tasks have left or reduced their hours recently. I'm exhausted and I would love to just stop existing right now, but I can't because then it would make things more difficult for others and I feel so guilty just thinking about that. Two things. Compassion. A true and sincere belief I have the capacity to help improve the lives of others and make the world a better place and I feel a certain obligation to give back to what made me that way and make it better for those yet to come. Rage. A pure, unfiltered bottomless well of fury. I spite nature by the sheer state of my continued existence and I will teabag it till death takes me. And I am going to give death one hell of a fucking fight when it comes for me. I have every single time. The universe is a massive collective of nothing, and I stand opposed to that nothing because I choose to be something. I exist and express my existence upon this reality. I hear the wails of oblivion and say, number, I am more than you will ever be. I'm not rich or anything and don't want to be. The reason for this is because I think that the struggle to get what I want keeps me happy when I manage to do something. I didn't get allowances growing and I thank my parents for that. My parents did a good job of raising me. I was never spoiled and never begged them to buy something for me. I would watch other kids at school and be jealous of what they had and tried to work to get what I wanted. Probably my strongest core belief is that life is exceedingly precious and something that should not be wasted. That belief has given me the strength to endure and break free from some dark times in my life. It's actually the single most defining thing in my life. I started feeling this way after my first trip on mushrooms as a teenager. Prior to that I had always assumed I would kill myself and didn't need to worry about or plan for the future. I'll never forget the profound realization of life's sacredness I experienced. The sheer amount of potential pathways I have ahead of me. I've been through quite a lot of ups and downs in my life and they taught me that things can change for the better or for the worse in an instant. Logically, if I hold on long enough, there's a chance that I might land up somewhere beyond my wildest dreams, and a bigger chance that my life quantitatively improves. I just need to be curious enough to keep going. That, and I always have the option of going on a fuck it binge that's so hedonistic, it would make God cry and Satan blush. Looking at the cocaine and hookers in Mexico guy. Then I'll see if life is worth living after that. At the risk of sounding cheesy, stones and trees and diamonds need to be broken down before they can be built up to something just as beautiful. I don't see why humans are any different. Every failure and defeat is just another chance to start afresh, if viewed from the right perspective. I was suicidal a few years ago. That was an all time low for me. But now I'm getting there you know. What keeps me going is looking back on how far I've come. It's honestly the best feeling. I'm not suicidal anymore I'm not as depressed anymore I'm not as anxious anymore I'm not worrying so much anymore my act isn't as bad as it was. My life just feels like it's going up and up and up and looking back on it really drives me to do even better. It's like I see how far I've come and I just wanna keep going.
I'm feeling the happiest I've felt in years and it feels good. You don't need to be a legendary hero, just exist for a little while, and be a decent, that's good enough, it's good enough for the ones you love. Do the things that makes you feel fulfilled and you will find your meaning without needing to look for it. That's the mentality that keeps me going for the time being. Well, after my four-year-old depression, I can say that I just don't give a fuck. I just don't worry because I can end it any time. I now barely have any anxiety, depression because I just enjoy life, and hardly feel sadness because for me it comes from worrying. Also, I know that my life is meaningless and I contribute nothing to the grand scheme. Guess what? I don't care. I live for myself, not for others to see. 32. Setback after setback after setback, never lost that childlike wonder or smile. No one has ever been nice to me, but I keep on going keep that wonder keep that smile. Those who love who are genuine are thought of as weak, but no not loving is weakness. This is a test, a test of faith. If you cannot feel the essence of existence then I feel for you. We're being pitted against evil to see if we rise above. Remember never lose your humanity. Why do the good always die young? It's just God taking his angels back to heaven where they're needed. Is why the bad live long lives. It's not gonna to be good for them on the other day side. After multiple depressive episodes, some of which lasted years. I now just kinda live moment to moment. It's really quite difficult for me to think far into into future, and for a while I thought that I wouldn't ever be free until I could. So I brought it up with my therapists and instead of a deep dive into how we can fix this, she simply said that for some people, their past experiences have been good, which helped them to affirm that their future will be the same. However, for someone like me who didn't have great past experiences, we just can't imagine a dandy future. So what keeps me going? I guess I finally started living just for me. No cosmic obligations, no promises to anyone. Just simply because the child that I was once was, before hope was stolen, before innocence was shattered, deserves a good life. This is a term I thought of a couple of years back when I was really deep in depression. A term that is not very common in people's lives, everything, in time. The term defines that even though you may go through obstacles, diversions, rough patches, anything you may call a downward slope that in time, everything, will be as it should be. Everything in time, is how I keep going, whether it's others mistakes or my own, I keep going, I keep breathing and learning new things, so that in time, everything will be as it should be. Life and death have been on my mind a lot over the past couple of years. Ever since a suicide in my family, I've done a lot of introspection and one of the things I commonly think about is this very question. The way I see it, the odds that I ever existed at all are beyond astronomical. The laws of physics had to work just right. Our planet had to form through random chance from space junk. Inert chemicals had to combine in just the right way to produce something alive that reproduced and diversified over billions of years and many extinctions that nearly killed everything, all the way down to humans and then my ancestors and then me, just the right sperm and egg to produce the person I know of as me. How crazy is it that we're even here at all, able to think about and observe this universe we live in? All random chance and pockets of stuff surrounded by trillions of times the emptiness. As far as we know, we're maybe the only ones who've gotten this far. I honestly think it's an incredible opportunity to be able to live at all. And I don't want to waste any time I might have to just experience things in general. Basically, I just think it's neat to be here. Purpose and all that comes later. Still looking for that part but I think I have a vague idea. My daughter and my dad tbh, the small amount of family I have left in general. A lot of times I feel like I only do things and keep my head above water for these people, so they don't have to see me waste away. I've always been kind of mystical and detached from this life, never seen it as being particularly serious. Just a weird existential ride, no real purpose or point to it all. Doesn't really matter what happens to me. If I didn't have a few people I genuinely would take a bullet for honestly. I don't think I'd live past 40 or so. I'd probably eat, drink, 
and drug myself to an early death. I see people saying they don't know why they keep going. I truly do not understand how if you don't have anything that you're working for what's the point. I think goals are a good thing and they make me happy cause when I complete them I feel accomplished. And then I try to set higher goals to better myself. Of course it don't succeed every time everyone has failures. But I think I and most other people try to grow from them. 